If you've bought a new car in the last few years, it's probably packed with special features like cameras to help when you're reversing. Many of these extras rely on semiconductors, essentially microchips, to work. A global shortage of semiconductors, though, means brands like Audi are having to simplify their products or even cut production levels overall. We would have never seen a Q5 without a sunroof, or we would have never seen you know, an A4 without a backup camera, but we're going to start seeing those because those production spots have to be taken up to produce a vehicle, and they're just going to have to produce them with 20 or 30 or 40 percent less semiconductor chips than they had, you know, in years past. With U.S. car manufacturers such as General Motors having to slash production in recent months as well, Congress is stepping in. The U.S. Innovation and Competition Act, which was passed by the Senate earlier this month, is partly designed to boost domestic semiconductor production. Many of the world's largest semiconductor producers, sometimes known as foundries, are based in Asia. The bill currently working its way through Congress would plow more than $50 billion into supporting the semiconductor industry in the U.S. The federal government certainly has deep pockets, but the proposed investment could be a drop in the ocean of what's actually needed. If the U.S. really wants to bring significantly more manufacturing capacity back on shore, $52 billion is a rounding error. It is not going to change that number appreciably. Like if it's 12%, an extra $52 billion over five years. TSMC by, just by themselves is getting ready to spend $100 billion over three years, one company. Investment bank Goldman Sachs expects the global shortage to ease in the second half of this year as supply catches up with demand. As for the US, companies like Intel are building brand new facilities in the country but they could take years to come online. Giles Gibson for CGTN, Washington.